Hox Lays an Egg by Butterfly Apocalypse on AO3. Episode 4, Chapter 3. Hox did not have this. He lost track of days. He thought vaguely it might have been something about two weeks. It felt like a lot longer than that, but days did tend to feel longer when you were awake for most of them. He'd put soap instead of toothpaste on his toothbrush. Twice. His diet consisted almost exclusively of takeout fried chicken. Well, that wasn't actually that unusual for him, but it felt like it added to the effect. He barely had been able to shower before the anxiety of being away from Omelet sent him back to the nest. In short, he was a mess. His one saving grace was that Dobby always texted to ask what he wanted to eat before showing up which gave Hawks enough time to gain some resemblance of being put together. His phone buzzed. Speak of the devil. From Extra Crispy Chicken. I'm here with food. Let me in. Well, that was different. Hawks glanced in the mirror. His hair was sticking up all over the place. Now, to clarify by sticking up all over the place, Hawks meant that in a way, it was entirely distinct from the normal sexy, wild, blown, and aloof toast. This wasn't even sexy in the bedhead slash sex hair way. It was just greasy and sad. His eyeliner would be better classified as a smoky eye. Unless there was just his eye bags. Normally, he would slap some concealer, some dry shampoo, and make sure his clothes looked cleanish. But... It looked like there wasn't time for that. Hawk scanned the room for something that might help. Hat, he thought. I'll wear a hat. His phone buzzed instantly again. From Extra Crispy Chicken. You still alive? Hello? If you don't answer your door, I'm gonna break in. Hawks pulled out the first hat he found, grumbling as he made his way to the door. He could physically feel every step he took away from Omelet, as was standard procedure. He cracked open the door and reached one hand out, expecting a bag of hot takeout to be handed to him. Instead, someone grabbed his hand and yanked him out of the door, faster than he could get his bearings. Hawk was spun around and left staring at his empty doorstep. You really need to clean. A familiar drawing voice commented behind him. Hawks turned around to see Dobby, standing inside his apartment. He blinked, shaking his head. Dobby had just switched their places. Hawks really needed some sleep if he let that happen. He didn't want Dobby getting the idea that he had power over him. That was bad news all around. Sure, Dobby. Come right in. Mi casa es tu casa. Thank you so much for asking. Hawk scribbled. He followed Dobby back into the apartment and closed the door harshly. Dobby gave Hawks a once-over. You look like shit. Hawks' eye twitched. His appearance really shouldn't be his biggest concern right now. He should probably be more angry at the fact that Dobby had just invaded his house. Or, more importantly, that he didn't smell like fried chicken at all. But no, instead of commenting on any of that, he went with, You weren't saying that last, last, uh, three-ish weeks ago. When even was the last time they slept together? What? Dobby said. You weren't saying that when we were having sex, Hawk said triumphantly. He cleverly phrased it so he didn't have to remember when that was. Uh, yeah, because you looked good then. Dobby scoffed. Hawks elated to ignore the warm feeling that bloomed in his chest at the sort of compliment. How long has it been anyways? He asked. Dobby would probably know. Dobby hadn't been losing his mind taking care of an egg. Dobby grinned woolishly, an interesting glint shining in his eyes. He stepped forward to run his hands down Hawks' side. Hmm, it's been a while, hasn't it? He leaned down to whisper in his ear. Care to fix that? Part of Hawks desperately wanted to agree, to be taken under and given the release. The reasonable part of Hawks knew that he would probably be too worried about leaving Omelette alone to enjoy much. 
The hungry part of Hawks just wanted food. It was two against one. Maybe next time. Uh-uh, buckaroo. Hold your horses. Hawk said, two feathers nearly picking Dobby's hands off of him, where they were wandering distantly downwards. He placed one hand against Dobby's large, firm peck, chest, to create some distance between them. Dobby shrugged, looking disappointed. You're lost. He plucked the hat off of Hawks's head. What's with the hat? It was a hot pink monstrosity of a basketball cap with the words Sugar Baby bedazzled in scrubbush crystals across the front. Hawks quickly snatched it back and tucked it under his arm. It was a gift, he exclaimed, definitely not blushing. Clearly, Dobby commented. Hawks didn't really want to explain that he had just put on the first hat he found so that Dobby wouldn't see his messy, unwashed hair. It was much less embarrassing to just let Dobby believe Hawks casually wore hats like that, even if they clashed with his wings. Where's my dinner? Hawks whined. Dobby held a grocery bag. Working on it. Well, that was definitely new. You're... you're cooking for me? His heart did not flutter. His heart did not flutter. His heart did not flutter. You're gonna have a heart attack if you only keep eating crap. And don't claim you're not eating crap. I know exactly what you've been eating. I've been bringing it to you. And, uh, I've gone to every place that does take out chicken around here twice, and that's pushing the limits. I don't really want to get recognized. Dobby exclaimed. He held up the bag. So you're eating real food tonight. Hawks narrowed his eyes. Define real food. Nothing fried, nothing processed. He pulled out what appeared to be some beef cuts. Some grain that's not full of sugar. He pulled out some rice. And this is very important. Some vegetable matter. He pulled out a bag of fresh mixed vegetables. Hawks made an expression like Dobby suggested he'd eat a cockroach. But, but fried chicken. There's no vegetable matter in fried chicken. Dobby deadpanned. Hawks, very barely, resisted the urge to stick his tongue out. Dobby wasn't even trying to rile him up, and he was succeeding. He instead went with a much more mature route of pouting silently. Dobby moved around the small apartment kitchen with surprisingly ease. Hawks didn't even know Dobby knew how to cook. Wait, did he know how to cook? Hawks would be offended if Dobby insulted his refined palate with overcooked beef and undercooked rice and... Ugh. He was shattering unseasoned vegetables. The one thing he couldn't complain about was that Dobby did look good from behind. It wasn't a sight that he often saw, since they just didn't trust each other. He supposed reluctantly that he didn't pose much of a threat to Dobby right now. But more than that, it felt like a gesture of trust. It was very domestic. When is it going to be ready? I'm hungry. Hawks complained, hurrying like a kid who just whomped a hornet's nest back to the safety. Familiar territory of bickering. No warm fuzzies here, thank you. If you're gonna backseat cook, I'll go slow on purpose. Dobby threatened. Hawk sipped his lips with an eye roll. He slid up behind his new professional chef, standing on his tiptoes as he watched over Dobby's shoulder. He's chopping some onions. You stink, Dobby commented. That was an unusually childish insult. You stink, Hawks retorted. Dobby snorted. No, I mean like, you need a shower. I could smell you over this onion. Did he? Hawks suddenly lifted his arm to give a whiff. Huh, yeah, he reeked. The part of him that was still riled up wanted him to wrap his arms around Dobby and force him to live in stench with him. The other part of him went, oh, shower. He thought a long, hot shower would literally be the sexiest thing to ever happen to him. And he would say that to any of his past lover's faces. Even Dobby. Especially Dobby. Ooh, maybe Dobby would join him. Wait, 
no, Dobby was cooking. Plus, Hawks had already shut down his advances. Hawks sighed in defeat. The pull he felt towards Omelette was growing steadily more insistent. He'll warm up his egg, take a shower, and then eat slash complain about whatever Dobby cooked. Hawks was angry. Hawks was furious. Hawks was enraged. Why? Because by some cruel trick, Dobby was an amazing cook. Which wasn't fair because he looked like he ate next to nothing. Everything he did eat went straight to building his pecs. What? He had fantastic pecs. Guy was probably a D cup of pure muscle. He had cleavage. That wasn't normally Hawks' deal, but it just really did it for him when Dobby wore those low cut tanks. He was getting off track. The point was if justice was real, everything Dobby cooked should be slightly burned. Dobby was leaning back in his chair with his arms crossed loosely. There was an immune glint in his eyes. The jerk. As he watched Hawks hork down the food. Hawks didn't even want to spare his attention to flip the bird off. Get it? Bird? It tasted nutritious. It tasted not greasy. In fact, it tasted anti-greasy. It was like he could feel the acaries cleaning. Was this... Was this what kale ladies felt like? Hawks was about three vegetables away from taking Pilates classes and starting a sloop cleanse. Maybe he should invest in the smoothie maker. I take it you like it. Dobby drawled. It's revolting, Hawks replied, just to be courteous. All right, Dobby said, unruffled. You want seconds? He held up another bowl of prepared food. Yes, please. Hawks reached out his hands eagerly. When he finally slowed his pace from starving Chihuahua to a reasonable human pace, Dobby cleared his throat. So, omelette. He stated casually. Hmm? Hawks hummed, shoveling the last of food into his mouth. Dobby picked awkwardly at the surface of his hand. How's, uh, he's still an egg and everything. Last I checked, said Hawks. Speaking of, I should probably go warm him up again. Oh, right, yeah. Dobby nodded. Should I, uh... He was being surprisingly fidgety, surprisingly awkward. This was probably about Omelette. Did... Did you want to see him? Hawks asked. Yes. I mean, yeah, I... Yeah. Dobby said quickly. Despite his initial apparent desire to get rid of Oblet, Hawks was pretty sure Dobby had come around to some sort of nervous interest in their egg, which he found it begrudgingly endearing. Hawks didn't exactly want Dobby, who could produce seemingly hot, storching flames, to be overly near around Oblet. As such, he pretended he didn't notice Dobby gulp as they entered his room. Hawks went immediately to the bed, bundling Almet into his arms. Here he is. He doesn't look any different. Dobby commented. Hawks tried not to laugh. Well, yeah, eggs don't really grow or change. All the change is going on inside. Dobby nodded. He was really out of his element if he was just listening to Hawks. I wish we could see what's going on. Yeah, Hawks agreed. I wanted to get to some supplies so we could candle him. Then we might have an idea. Dobby looked vaguely horrified. Candle? Like? He held up his index finger, letting a small tongue of blue flames dancing to the tip. Hawks couldn't hold back his laugh at that. N no, it's just what they call shining a bright light through the egg so you could see what's on the inside. What do you need to, uh, candle him? Dobby asked. Hawks wouldn't have taken him for such a diligent guy, but he was full of surprises tonight. For chicken eggs, they just usually use a flashlight or a cardboard tube. I guess we could use just a bright light and uh, blanklets. Though he thought about the prospect of candling omelette, he hadn't given much thought to the mechanics. Anyways, do you want to touch him? Dobby looked taken aback. Am I allowed? You're being shockingly polite about all this, Hawks mentioned, 
not apprehendably. Of course, you're allowed. Well, pardon me for not wanting to be sliced up by feathers. Dobby grumbled. He reached out a hand towards Omelet. He hesitated for just a moment before placing his fingertips gingerly against the shell. His lips curved upwards gently. He's warm. Good job, Mama Hen. Okay, well, this was a sweet chapter. Dobby is actually being a good person. I love this. I like this. I, he's showing interest in Omelette. He's showing interest in Hawks. Um, I like the idea of Hawks just being like, hey, I don't have time to do anything. I just take care of baby. Baby, take care. Um, so, <laughs> when, you, when you see in media, sometimes they don't portray media, like, with having babies, like, they don't portray it properly. In the sense of, like, sometimes you see, like, oh, yeah, we have a newborn baby, and, like, they're all, like, the mother is, like, all prettied up with makeup, and, like, they all look like they've had eight hours of rest. I'm sorry. Sure, the first night with your newborn, and, like, the first couple nights with your newborn, they're, like, dead asleep. They ain't gonna wake up. But after that dead sleep comes the restless night of having to wake up every night at random hours because your baby is crying you don't have time for things like self-care you don't got time for shit and it gets worse if you have another kid because it's like now not only do i have to take care of this little crying gremlin who only thinks about eating sleeping and shitting i have to think about that other one that could literally kill himself if we don't you know take care of that one because that one could just start running around and doing stuff they're not supposed to so yeah I, I do I do love the portrayal that hawks very much can't be separated from the egg. It also makes sense. A lot of the times with chickens, they don't want to be separated from the eggs or or even birds in, in general. Like from what I know, like they I mean like that's in animals in general as well. Like they just don't want to be separated from their young, their 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 hatch egg hatchling, their eggs or they're they're young, right? Um I know dogs can become really territorial when it comes to like their puppies and stuff like that. Even when the puppies are still in their stomach, like, they become super fucking territorial and stuff like that. So, I think this is interesting. And Dobby being a good cook is not something I thought would be a thing. But, yeah, weirdly it makes sense. Weirdly it makes sense. I wonder if we're going to be seeing a lot more of Dobby coming over and home cooking something for Hawks instead. And maybe even helping out Hawks. Because Hawks is very much getting overwhelmed right now. So, I wonder if Dobby's going to start helping, like, hey... You go do what you need to do. I'll take care of the egg here. You have to do what you need to do. I'm taking care of the egg. You don't got to worry. Um, so, yeah. I wonder if that's going to happen. It's, it's going to be sweet if that happens. As always, my rain drops. Make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.